If you like sweet sulfur, broccoli, and boiled potatoes, I think you'll like this one. I know it doesn't sound very pleasing, but this is a pleasing whiskey. Welcome to Whiskey is a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and today's journey, we are heading to St. George, Alameda, California, with their single malt American style whiskey. This is batch number 19. Let's go ahead and pour it, nose it, taste it, and talk about it. All right, so this, right, all right, right up front. I was gonna be a little bit curious on this. I've had this whiskey quite a few times and the previous two times with my brother-in-law, Steve, and out camping, I've had quite the experience with nosing and tasting this. So let me go ahead and stop right here and let me talk a little bit about um, smell and taste. It's all subjective. Depending upon the time of day, what you've eaten, your experience, uh, who you're with, your surroundings, your mood, all of these things can impact how you are perceiving smell and taste. This whiskey has changed so much over time with me from the first time I opened the bottle to the tasting with Robert and Jeremy and to the multiple times that I've had this either by myself or with other people. When you smell something, you have this olfactory sensory nerves in your in the top part part of your nasal cavity when these particles hit this they're going to transfer a signal to the brain that's going to trigger either a certain feeling a certain emotion we're emotional beings and we associate smell with what we're familiar with and we try to make sense of it and then in conjunction with what you actually taste you put these two things together and we try to make sense of what we're tasting what, and what we're smelling. Since it's so subjective, one person could have a different experience with a smell and a taste that puts them off, or that same sense of taste and smell might be more pleasurable or happy thoughts to somebody. So they can experience these the exact same whiskey in different ways. With all that being said, I'm getting a sulfur smell, a sweet sulfur smell. I'm also getting broccoli and boiled potatoes. Now that might sound not so pleasant, but it's actually fairly pleasing. Now let's go ahead and give this a taste. On the palate, it just washes over the tongue. It's a little bit oily, but I'm definitely still getting that sulfur and broccoli and potato. So what's on the nose to me for the past couple of times that I've had this is also following through with the taste. And it's not a bad thing. So don't don't get me wrong. This is still a, a very good tasting whiskey to me. It just doesn't have those, I guess like as a pleasing um, sound to it, you know, broccoli, sweet broccoli, uh, sulfur and potatoes. That doesn't sound like it goes well together, but it just keeps unfolding and Back behind all of that, I'm also getting um, stone fruit, maybe a little bit of a uh, caramel toffee or a caramel coffee, like a cream, a cream caramel. It just keeps going. I would say that it's more complex than the other American single malts that I've had in the past. but just with that very strange combination of sulfur, broccoli, and potatoes. Doesn't sound so good, but but it is but it is good. Let me go ahead and put some water in this and talk a little bit about the distillery, the master distillers, and their whole process here. So let's go ahead and give this a little bit of time with the water. And let's talk about uh, the whiskey itself. There is no age statement on this, but they're saying, and they have a pamphlet they release for every one of their batches. This is batch number 19. They're saying that the average age of the whiskey that's in here is seven years old. The youngest is five, and the oldest is coming from their Solera cask. So much like the Glenfiddich 15, they have this barrel that they just keep dumping whiskey in. And the whiskey, as they start to produce batches, it never goes empty. They just kind of refill it. So there, there's probably around 19, maybe 19 years, 19-year-old uh, whiskey in here. Their mash bill has been unchanged since batch number one. And they use two-row barley, which I don't think is 
is very uncommon in the whiskey world or in the beer brewing business. Their two row barley goes through multiple different um, roastings. So let me get this correct. They have a pale roast, crystal, chocolate, black patent, and, and Bamberg malt. So those specific roastings on their malt, like I said before, has gone unchanged since batch number one. Now, as they do the batches, I'm guessing they pull from different barrels and different amounts. So you end up getting batch variation. I've had this whiskey in the past and it has presented itself different each time I've had it. And each time I've had it, I've liked it. But it definitely has changed in the nose and the taste each time. So Lance Winter is the master distiller and now the new owner. I don't know the original owner's name, Jorg something or other, uh, but apparently Lance Winters uh, took over ownership of the distillery and he left the custodial operations to Dave Smith uh, back in 2014. And something also to note about St. George is they don't just do single malt whiskeys, single malt American whiskeys. They do gin, vodka, brandy. And in fact, they were the first distiller in the United States that legally uh, distilled absinthe. So that's that's very interesting. Let's go ahead and give this a, uh, a taste with the water on the nose with the water. I still get the broccoli. I still get the sweetness coming through. And it's a sweet broccoli. It's not necessarily a sweet fruit. It's sweet vegetables. The broccoli, the, the boiled potatoes, and a little bit of that sulfur. Yep, all that stuff is still there. I still get the sulfur. I still get the broccoli. I still get that sweetness. Not a fruit sweetness, but a vegetable sweetness. I mean, it's good. It unfolds. It continues to grow. It kind of coats the tongue. The finish is long. And it just kind of, I mean, it's smooth. I mean, there's nothing sharp in this aftertaste and there's nothing sharp in the taste of the whiskey itself. And maybe that has something to do with the, uh, the different malts, the different roasting on the malt. Maybe it has something to do with the ABV. This doesn't say anything about being chill filtered, doesn't say anything about not using color. So I'm just assuming at 43 ABV, they're chill filtering. And because they don't say that it's natural, I'm guessing that, it's, that it, they use the E150. And I think I already mentioned this earlier on. Batch number 19 is in stores going for about $99, just about 100 bucks. Phoenix, Arizona, where I'm at right now, the big box stores, they carry, at least the, uh, the Total Wine and Moors, they carry this. And I think they're up to batch 21 now. I haven't seen batch 21 in the stores. They're still on batch 19. Don't know if they're gonna get 21 or 20. I know they do one release a year. This bottling of batch 19 had 3,300 bottles. From some of the stuff that I've seen online, if you go to the distillery, the distillery allotment itself is very low. So you really, I mean, they sell out of it immediately. The stuff that you do get will probably end up being in stores. So I think that's pretty much all I have for you guys on this one. Uh, if you have experience with St. George, if you know anybody in the whiskey world that would be interested in the channel, go ahead and share this channel with them. If you're watching this and you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. Turn on that bell notification so when I do go live with another video, you'll be notified. If you like sweet sulfur, broccoli, and boiled potatoes, I think you'll like this one. I know it doesn't sound very pleasing, but this is a pleasing whiskey. Very complex. Yep. Sulfur, broccoli, and potatoes. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. Bye.